We've travelled all around the world, Johnny, and pretty much universally, wherever we go, whatever we ask for, whenever we say we'd like a beer, we get a lager, don't we? We yeah. get a lager given to us. You just get handed a pale lager. And even more specifically, you probably get handed a pilsner. But do you actually know what a pilsner is? Did you know that there's loads of different pale lager styles? Well, you will by the end of this video. This is what even is pilsner. So, Johnny, I don't know about you, but I certainly first discovered what a Pilsner is when we went to Pilsen. Yeah, absolutely. That's where we first learned what a Pilsner actually was. Before that point, I didn't know. In fact, I remember going on forums trying to work out what the difference was between a German and a Czech Pilsner, between any Pilsner and a Hellas. Mm. And we learned while we were in the Czech Republic. So if we just rewind, do a little bit wobbly <laughs> to our trip in Pilsen, which you can watch by clicking up one of these sides. One day we'll work out which side it is. Um, <laughs> And there we learned that Pilsner Akel literally means the original Pilsner, mm -hmm. um, the original source of that style. So what happened was, uh, in the sort of the, the Alpine region, like southern Germany, like Bohemia, there was lots of lager brewing happening already. And that was because they found that the yeast that they had, they got the best beers by keeping them cold in these Alpine caves or, or burying them in the ground. And that's because they were using these lager yeasts that prefer a colder temperature. But they still weren't necessarily getting consistent results, particularly in Pilsen, which we mm. learned. And one year, 1842, mm. the batch from all the breweries in Pilsen was so bad that the story goes that the, the local townspeople kind of flipped out and just poured it all away. Everything, the whole, everything for the year. They like just the entire wow. year's batch. You got. To, I mean, it must be quite bad if you're going to sabotage yourself and pour all of your beer supply away. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, it sounds <clears throat> mad, but actually back then, because these lagers would have taken a long time to ferment at these cold temperatures, if you could have a whole year's batch ruined mm. by like some extra warm temperatures or whatever it is, a bad batch of malt. Mm. So it does, it does make a little bit of sense. You might just go, we'll pour this away and we'll get some from elsewhere because we f***ed it this time, guys. Um, so they poured all this away and a load of rich people People in that town went we're gonna found our own brewery uh, like we're all gonna put money in like a collective mm -hmm. and we're gonna make a great brewery and so it's this wonderful collective effort by the rich townsfolk and maybe some of the poorer ones um, and the way they went about it was very collective as well and that they got a, a German master brewer the Germans have been doing like dark lagers in their case for, for centuries yes um, and then they also got a load of technology I think that German brewer had been over to the UK where they just started indirect kilning so they were managing to get pale malt so they were kilning it but not you know, burning it, making it dark. So they combine those two things, the, the wonderful German yeasts and technical knowledge and the English pale malt, and they invented the Pilsner. This, so it, it, this, this is a long time ago this happened, and this was a, a collective effort across Europe. Yeah. Quite amazing. Yeah, it, truly an international feat that came together and created the Pilsner. Now, we're going to drink some of this. Mm. So this is not the original. Pilsner Raquel is the original. But this is the, the biggest, in, well, I say independent brewery. It's owned by the state, which is quite an interesting story in itself. So this is Budweiser Budvar, and it's made in a very similar way to Pilsner Raquel. There's decoction, uh, which is where you basically put, peel off a bit of the mash, boil it, and put it back in, and it's all caramelly and delicious. Yeah. Um, so it's like a way of sort of supercharging it to make it more caramelly and sticky and, like, absolutely. Whoa, unctuous. So... This is the original style of Pilsner. Yes. So you can see there's a lovely dark caramel colour and we'll get lots and lots of very uh, specific aroma off of this. And it's the clarity, isn't it, that made it a Pilsner? Well, it would have been the colour that the made colour. it a Pilsner, not the clarity. Yeah. Um, the, 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 you know, that would have been an absolute uh, mind boggle to the mm -hmm. people of, of the Czech Republic. Uh, of Bohemia back then. They'd have never seen a beer that colour. Everything they'd have had would have been darker before. Yeah. So that is the original pale. And it's gla it's glass worthy, isn't it? Like yeah. back then, it would have been like a jewel, sort of, the, you know, like shining. Well, it like, probably wow. would have been served in stone mugs so that you mm. hid how hazy and how dark a beer was. Suddenly, glass started getting popular for serving beer because you were like, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> right, let's give this a go. So, loads of caramel. Sweet grassy hops, kind mm. of apple notes as well. Mm. Doesn't smell a lot like what you'd get around the world saying, I'll just have a beer. But no. this is the original Pilsner aroma and flavour. Okay, so I get it, Johnny. This is basically the, the original blueprint 
to a lager. Yep. What are these other three beers? <laughs> okay, so as we've already said, that style spread all over the world. But in particular, it obviously spread to Germany. Yes. It was just, just over the border, mm. just through the forest. Uh, and they were fantastic at making lagers as well. So that spread very quickly to Bavaria in particular. So there is a style. This is called the Bohemian Pilsner now. Mm. Then there's the German Pilsner, mm. which is what we've got here. It's actually, this variety is, is my favourite sort of German-style Pilsner uh, that's brewed in the UK. It's called Keller Pils and it's from Lost and Grounded. This style kind of varies within Germany itself. So in southern Germany, it's a little bit softer, it's a little bit less hoppy, and that's yeah. because they had similar water to what you had here. So there's, oh, yeah. there's not huge amounts of bitterness, there's some sweetness. But a northern German Pilsner, the most famous example of which is Jeva, Mm. If you've ever had that one. Yeah. Um, this style is big and hoppy and bitter and bold, but it's also flavor-wise, not necessarily actual sugar content-wise, flavor-wise significantly drier. Right. So you're going to get big, big bitterness and lots of hop aroma and also a kind of, like you'll, you'll get particularly on the Northern German native ones some sort of hints of, of sulfur and stuff like that like really savory stuff yeah definitely it's kind of like herbal and, and like you say sulfury yeah but also there's there's grainy not caramel kind mm -hmm. of malt notes there it's much drier and actually in some ways this is even closer to that macro pilsner that macro lager um flavor and aroma that we get it's just that in those it's incredibly muted here it's big and it's bold yes and it's exciting yes without doubt now, down south in Munich, they had beautiful soft water just like they had in Pilsen. Nice. So too much, too, too much um, hoppiness wouldn't really suit that really lovely mm -hmm. soft sort of profile. So they came up with the Hellers. And what you're going to get from here is a very, very different malt profile and hop profile compared to the other two. And also... Even paler colour. How is it even paler, Johnny? It's Look at that. so incredibly it's pale. It's very, very pale, that is. <laughs> so let's get the aroma on this bad boy. <sighs> Lemony notes. It's, it's kind of soft. Yeah, again, really, really soft. Loads and loads and loads of lemon rind mm, mm. Uh, and honey as well. Yeah. Soft, yeah. sweet honey which we haven't got in either of those two no and that comes from soft water combined with the the special sort of the munich well not the munich malt malt from munich munich malt is actually a slightly darker malt mm. but like pilsner malt german pilsner malt yeah that's adding that lovely honey flavor and a soft hoppiness that just leaves some nice lemony character uh, hang on mate we're in munich now right of course thanks man <laughs> that feels like a covid safe way of handing <laughs> handing food over See, for a proper one, if this was in Germany, that'd be coated in sea salt mm. that would be oh. ripping at our palates and making cuts in the top of our mouths. <laughs> and I miss that, Johnny. I, I miss the cuts as well. So it's sweeter, mm. but not caramelly sweet. No. Honey sweet. Honey sweet. Like a mead. It's amazing that these are, you know, these are all happening same sort of time. Same kind of location, and yet quite different interpretations. So to surmise, Johnny, yep. the Czechs, the originators, very caramelly, mm -hmm. bittersweet, mm -hmm. and a floral note. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. So then we moved to Germany, Johnny. And in the north, they dried it out. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they made it more bitter. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's more herbal. Yeah, absolutely. Because of the water that they had, it was harder, so it's, it's drier, more bitter more yeah. herbal, but still incredibly grainy, crushable. And then when it goes south in Germany, yeah. um, it becomes more lemony um, and, and, and a kind of honey sweetness to it. Yeah, like lots of malt character balance with the hops uh, and designed to be drunk in, in <clears throat> large quantities, but very, yeah. yeah, they've got it all figured out. Simple. So I understand all of that. Yeah. What's this? <laughs> <laughs> so one of my greatest bugbears when it comes to talking about beer is meeting people who think that lager is boring or limited, or as you said earlier, all the same. All the same. So I put this in here to, well, blow some minds. 
So, um, Schlenkerle is a brewery from Bamberg. Mm -hmm. Bamberg, in the Franconian region of Bavaria, has an incredible lager culture. Pretty famous for its Keller beers, which are a slightly darker, sweeter, caramelly, uh, not very hoppy at all style of beer mm. that you can get in hundreds of breweries around there, and they're all delicious. It's like liquid bread. However, they have two famous breweries that focus on smoked beer, and that's what we're going to drink now, although technically this is not a smoked beer. It's a non-smoked smoked beer. Exactly that. <laughs> so, um, Schlenkerle, they smoke their own malt in Bamberg. Nice bit of smoke on it. Nice bit of smoke. There you go. Um, the whole town of Bamberg smells smoky on the right day. And well, you probably won't get wafted this yet, but this is their Hellas. So this is very similar to the Tegans there. Mm. A little bit rough around the edges mm -hmm. in terms of hoppiness and, and kind of malt character. It has no smoked malt in it. That's how beers get smoked. They use smoked malt. Um, so it's basically, it's kiln over a fire that has, um, I think it's beechwood um, yeah. in there that's giving it a smoky character. There is no smoked malt in this. This is purely smoky through being used and uh, pushed through the same equipment as all those smoked beers from being in that town. So it's literally a flavor of being in Bamberg. So it's like, it's like almost like osmosis. It's yeah. just like sucked in the smoke. It's just imbued with smoke like most of Bamberg is. So even though it looks the same and it has exactly the same ingredients almost as the mm. Tegans there, just probably different fields of yeah. the, the hops and the barley and a different yeast because a different brewery, it's going to be radically different. Mm. I'm, I'm excited. I'm just going to watch you smell it. Oh. <laughs> I mean... It smells like frazzles. It's a smoked beer, right? It smells like frazzles. It's... I, I mean, I, 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 I now want a plate of smoked cheese and frazzles. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, now we want cheese and, and cured meat. Mm. But how Moorish is that? It's pretty Moorish, mate. Yeah. Like that, that, that with a frankfurter. Oh, now that he's with a, a, a white sauce, any kind of sausage. Oh. It's just an absolutely killer beer. And so you have that sweet honeyed stuff. You have a little mm. bit of herbalness that is coming from those German hops. But it's got this really Moorish, umami ish, bacon kind of vibe to it. That's just like any other beer in the world. Any other. Yeah. It's the same with, there's lots of things about Bavarian brewing that you just can't quite seem to emulate. And obviously, scientifically, you can. But I've never had a Hefeweiss from outside of uh, Bavaria that's quite tasted right. Mm -hmm. And I've never had a smoked beer outside of Bavaria that's tasted quite like it does here. Yeah. There is some kind of uh, serendipity of all of these things coming together to create a flavour of Franconia, a flavour of Munich. Mm -hmm. So to answer, you know, the name of this video is What Even Is Pilsner? And I think the only concise answer you can give is not what you get when you ask for beer around the world. Mm -hmm. It can be caramelly and floral and bittersweet. It can be dry and herbal. And even those two are polar opposites Yeah, in terms of the flavours. And then if you go over to the other pale lagers, which somebody in a bar would probably give to you just, you know, if you go to the bar and ask for a lager in a craft beer bar, they'll just give you the hellers or the pills in it. They won't say... It's a hell, is, is, are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. They'll just give it to you. And that is entirely different to these. It's all honey and grass. And then, I mean, if you had this on tap, you'd have to tell somebody. You couldn't just serve that as a normal lager. But the breadth within that style of what is encompassed within beer or within pale lager or within lager or within pilsner or hellers is so broad. Every single metric that you could use to describe a beer, bitterness, you know all, all the you know all the different things that you mm. could use. The, these have got so many uh, variations in the scale, right? The, even, this is even if they look the same, which yeah, is yeah, why yeah. I think they get lumped together. It's kind of wild. Yeah, yeah, it is crazy, and that's why on the craft beer channel, one of our favourite styles will always be beer. I mean lager. I mean pale lager. <laughs> I mean pilsner, or maybe Hellas. <laughs>